friends and welcome back to our homestead. It's June and we have beautiful dill growing. My sister grew this gorgeous dill that she brought me a whole big bag and I decided to show you how I'm going to be preserving it. Now two years ago when I first started my channel, it's, going to, it's almost two years now, uh, one of my first videos was about dill. And I showed you how you can pr pr preserve dill with salt. And I'm going to be doing that today as well. So I'm not really going to focus too, too much about how I'm mixing salt and dill. But I will put up a link. I'm not sure which part of the screen it's going to be on. So you can guys go and watch how you can preserve dill with salt stored in a cool place. So you have, if you have a refrigerator, put it in the refrigerator. If you have a root cellar, root cellar but it needs a cool place. It's not safe to be on a shelf. It will ferment a little bit, very, very mild fermentation, but it's going to be beautiful in your soups, your stews, in your salad dressings. It's going to be great. And I will be doing that. The ratio that I like to use for chopped, small, very fine chopped dill, fresh dill with salt is two parts dill by weight, to one part salt by weight. I prefer to use pink Himalayan salt or Celtic sea salt. And I'm gonna be using a very coarse sea salt today to make my, uh, my dill that I'm gonna be preserving. Also, I'm gonna be doing a second way of preserving dill. Now, you may ask me, well, why can't I just chop it up and put it in a little baggie and put it in the freezer? And you know what? I'm going to say, yes, go for it. Um, it's possible to do that. But a couple of things that may happen to your dill, I know that's what happened to mine. It's going to change its color to this dark green, almost black. So, and also that means you have to have electricity at all times. But if you're going to be traveling or there's going to be unexpected or unexpected loss of electricity and you're afraid of things in your freezer going bad, you need your dill to be stored to be shelf stable. So today I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna make, preserve my dill, I'm gonna make my dill shelf stable for storage and then it can store two, three years. Well, I usually don't keep it that long, but at least two years you're gonna have delicious dill available to you for cooking. All right, so I have this very long, big bunch of dill. Some of it already going into beautiful crowns. Look at that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off these big stalks and I'm going to use them for something else. What is it that something else I use them for? Well, if you have watched me before, you know that I make homemade broth and I'm going to be cutting them up putting them in a Ziploc bag and they're gonna go in a freezer. And next time when I'm making homemade broth with whatever meat I've got, I'm gonna take out those beautiful stalks of dill and add them to, to my broth. In about uh, two or three weeks, we're gonna be harvesting our meat chickens. And when I make that beautiful, delicious chicken broth, right? That's where they're gonna go. They're perfect, they're perfect. So right now, because it's already such a big deal, <laughs> big deal, ha ha ha, no pun intended. Um, I'm gonna take off just the branches and these little um, ferns, and I'm gonna keep the stalks again for the broth. So let me just separate all of them, and I'm gonna chop them up. I'm gonna chop them up, and I'm going to use a dehydrator. So I'm making a big pile of these beautiful ferns that I can be drying them and I will show you how I'm gonna do it. So why have I decided to dry and make um, spices or herbs shelf stable? You know, in the past few years, we've had some storms go come through New England where we lost power for a very long time. A very long time and you know we were we were fine you know we had a generator going but you know we never know and we can never anticipate what may happen if we're unable 
to maintain electricity for a prolonged period of time. So if we don't have shelf stable dried foods available to us, we may, we may be in a pickle. Okay, we may be in a pickle. So you can read between the lines what I'm talking about, okay? So it is a good idea to have foods dried, preserved, and ready to be used. You probably can go ahead and purchase uh, dill, dried dill at the supermarket. And I have recently bought a few containers when we visited the Amish country, and I brought home delicious dill. But you know, when I opened that package, it did not smell like this. It did not smell like this. And the color was green. I'm not gonna say that it was bad, but the aroma was not there. It is not like homemade. See, because we have no way of uh, knowing how, how it was raised, how it was preserved, you know, the, the environment, how it was um, stored. But when you do it at home and you use the best the freshest organically grown herbs and then you preserve them yourself so you know exactly what's going on so look at this beautiful pile of herbs I have I have a whole lot more to go through all right so all of the stems are here it's gonna go in a ziplock bag it's a freezer safe ziplock bag and I'm gonna put it for future use all right so that's gonna go in a freezer for now all right so I have this nice big pile of fresh dill you know in the past I have chopped them up to speed up the dehydrating process but let me show you what happened so they go and through this uh, dehydrating trays I have this dehydrating machine that has a setting for uh, specific setting for just herbs. It is the lowest setting on the machine and I'll show you that in a minute. So, um, and then everything goes on these trays and these are the little um, mats that everything sits on, right? So what happens if these very fine little ferns are chopped up, as they drying, they become even smaller and they begin to fall through. So I've learned and my own mistakes that I no longer chop them up. Instead, I put in a loose single layer my herbs just like this, okay? And I dehydrate them just like this, all right? Just like this, in a single layer, not overcrowding. There is no need to overcrowd. We have plenty of trays. All right, so what if you don't have a dehydrator to dehydrate these things? There are other ways to dehydrate. You can always dehydrate in the oven. Put it on a cookie sheet, turn the, uh, turn the, um, the oven to the lowest setting you've got, to the lowest setting you've got. And then keep the door of the, um, of the oven slightly ajar. So there's air circulation and it doesn't stay as hot as it should be. And you have to keep an eye on it because you don't wanna cook this dill. We wanna dehydrate this dill. You know, some of my homesteading off-grid friends who don't have dehydrators and such a things, they literally put them on a trays and they keep them in the car in the summer when it's really, really hot and they dehydrate pretty quickly because you know hot, how hot the cars get in the summer. And that's another way to dehydrate your herbs. But I'm gonna be using a dehydrator. I'm gonna set it and don't forget it. Unlike the old commercials used to say, I'm gonna run it for about four hours and I'm gonna check on it. And everything has to be 
crumbly and crunchy. Nothing should be wilty and still bendy. So I'm going to check it for hours and then I'm going to check again if I need to continue running the machine for the next two hours. So I'm going to check again at six hours and then at eight hours. So again, I'm not going to just forget about it and let it do its dehydrating thing because I don't want it to be cooked. I don't want to lose the beneficial aspects, the components of the dill. I want the aroma to be there. I want the color to be there. And I want the medicinal properties that dill has to remain. All right. So once it's dry, once it's dry and you can literally hear the crunch of the branches and of the ferns, they crunchy to the sound, like crumbly. That's the time to turn off the machine and store it away. Okay. You may keep it as a branch, but it's going to fall apart. Trust me. I like to put it in a food processor. I like to put it in a food processor and pulverize everything into a manageable powder. And then it's going to look like this. And then I sort in a jar. Okay. That just, just like this. So let me show you what it looks like. Look at this beautiful color. Yeah. Do you see that? And it's done by, and it's done by a pulverizing everything in the food processor or a blender, whatever you prefer. And it has, it has a beautiful, beautiful aroma. And then it can be used as, as you know, any, any kind of herb in your kitchen. So now it's dried and ready to be used anytime. It's gonna be right there in my pantry. So friends, you know, recently I found some information and in literature um, that some of the spices and herbs that are purchased at the markets are not of very clean ingredients. You know, the heavy metal has been identified and um, just other things because they come from all over the world. So friends, I encourage you to grow your own herbs and spices, dry them, preserve them and use them in the kitchen. If you are unable to grow them, you know, farmer's markets are right there. CSA is available. So friends, be encouraged and try something new.